Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Vampire the Masquerade game. Wahoo! <laughs> Look at all of these beautiful people who are here with me. This isn't usually what the channel looks like, but here we are. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Um, if you're new here, if you're just now following, uh, hi. This is my channel. I'm Maria. Hello. Welcome. Um, what we are doing here today, typically I play a lot of video games and talk very loudly and all of those sorts of things, but uh, today we are raising money. We're disappearing into the void. <laughs> uh, but today we are doing a one-shot, a TTRPG one-shot of Vampire the Masquerade, which Dan was, was D'Angelo was showing off, but I will also show off. This wonderful, fantastic tabletop RPG. Uh, I love it so incredibly much. And these fantastic people on this call said yes when I asked them to play. So we're gonna do that today. Um, the charity that we are raising for is the American Heart Association. Um, at any time during the game, you can hit exclamation mark charity, donate, and incentives. That'll tell you who the charity is and give you a link to their website. Uh, the donate will send you directly to the Tiltify, which is also shown up here. Um, we're already at $60 of our $200 goal before the stream even started, so that's pretty neat. Um, and then incentives. There are incentives to make our lives better or worse. Uh, so when you donate, uh, if you want to use any of those incentives, please do denote which one you want to use. There should be an option to choose that. But uh, all in all, we're here to have a great time. Be sexy, cool vampires. Probably not die or kill anyone, right? No one would ever do that. Uh, and raise money for a really good cause. Uh, so I hope that I hope you're all here for that, because that's what we're gonna do. Um, but uh, before I continue uh, saying a lot of words in a lot of ways, D'Angelo, welcome to the channel. <laughs> Please Thank tell you for us what me. we're doing and everything. Yeah, so uh, tonight we're going to be playing a one-shot of Vampire the Masquerade. Um, originally, the title for this was going to be Turf War, and it was very good, like a gun and run, political intrigue situation. Uh, and then I don't know what happened to me, but I just went down a deep, dark hole. So we're going to just like see where this leads. Uh, and I hope you guys all enjoy it. So um, if you don't know me, uh, my name is D'Angelo Murillo. You can find me on all social media at that underscore D'Angelo. I'm a game designer, a writer, a uh, you know professional dungeon master and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited to be here. So what we're gonna do first, before we get to the game, is honor our cast by having everyone go ahead and introduce themselves, where they can be found online, and uh, and then later we'll go to character introductions. So uh, starting off, we're gonna go with um, the ever dreamy uh, Jorge. Oh, muted. Love Hello, it me, <laughs> Robo Goblin, and you can find me at TTRP Gibbs on Twitter and on Twitch, and 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 my pronouns are L T V, and uh, that's 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 all you wanted from me, right? Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Okay, okay. If you're satisfied, I'm. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot one more thing. If you've never played with me before, there is a rule shit. that I have. Oh, no. <laughs> oh shit. Four of my I think it would count. Yep. Uh, for my streams, it doesn't count. You can redo it if you want to. Um, the players that play at my table are required to speak with their full chest and speak about how wonderful and beautiful and amazing they are, and uh, to not have a single ounce of humility or humbleness, like sort of in it, uh, because you are amazing and wonderful, and the main character of this anime, and never a side character. So uh, bring that energy. So um, you know, or hey, if you're down and you're good with that, then that's like totally cool. You still get your um, one reroll for the night. Uh, okay. You, yeah. So then moving on, uh, let's go to uh, Lonzo Gonzo. Hola, soy Lonzo Gonzo. Um, hey everyone, I'm Lonzo Gonzo, uh, pronouns he, him. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Lonzo Gonzo. You can find me at Twitch where I stream sometimes at Lonzo Gonzo underscore on the someone else. All right, and then going over to Dan. Hey, what up, everybody? This is Dan. You can find me at Nat One Fun pretty much everywhere I am. Uh, you can, of course, catch me on Twitter most of all, but here on Twitch Live, where I do a lot of actual plays, I do a lot of TTRPG production, um, trying to make your videos look cool. Uh, and you can catch me on YouTube too. I'm trying to build up my YouTube audience. So, anyways, you can find me anywhere on the internet if you type in like slash Nat One Fun on whatever website you're on. You'll probably find me. 
Perfect. And then uh, Zephy? It's me, Zephy. And like most of everyone here, you can find me on Twitter under the same name. Same with Twitch, where I play a lot of uh, story games with big plots. And, well, I play games with my friends too sometimes, but that's usually for charity. <laughs> <laughs> like now, look at me. with my... Yeah, anyway, so that's me. <laughs> Come by for a very chill time. Perfect. And then one more time, Maria, could you uh, go ahead and tell us who you are, what you do and all that? Of course. Hello, everyone. My name is Maria. This is my home. Welcome. Uh, you can find me at Happy Capster everywhere that the internet is sold. Uh, I am a variety streamer, TTRPG content creator, voice actor, co-founder of companies and wearer of many hats. So find one of them and I it's on my head. Perfect. So we are going to go ahead and get into uh, our session of like this one shot chronicle of Vampire the Masquerade. So you are playing in a setting called Phoenix by Night, which is one of my own creation, uh, where there are various other groups that also play in the world of Phoenix by Night. So you will interact with things in their games and they will interact with things that uh, decisions that you guys sort of make uh, in all of this, you know, whole sort of situation. So for example, uh, Dan, the first time he ever played Vampire the Masquerade, he helped uh, kill the prince of, of Phoenix. And now oh. there's a new prince. <laughs> so uh, your actions do have real consequences for everyone else involved, which should be pretty spicy. So in this uh, setting, you are all kindred, AKA vampires who have who walked the path of night. Um, you've been embraced, you know, sometime whether it be six months ago or like, you know, 60 years ago, depending on, you know, uh, when you were actually embraced and everything. You reside in the Arizona territory uh, that is like, you know, going through a lot right now as the Anarchs have moved into this like usually Camarilla dominated territory uh, and you guys serve the actual Camarilla, which is like the vampire government essentially. Uh, as there's a lot of elders that are very powerful. They have a lot of restrictions on what they do, but at the same time, their resources are also, you know, uh, in abundance. And they have a lot of things down pat as far as uh, maintaining this masquerade. That way mortals don't understand that there are other things that go bump in the night and all that. So every month you guys have to pay your dues to the prince uh, who rules this territory. And it can be financially or it can be a, an act of service. Uh, usually though, it is an act of service. And this month, Prince Vargas, um, who is new, who's been only the prince for a few months now, uh, made a lot of waves and a lot of big changes, has requested your assistance in defending a territory located in Glendale, Arizona. Um, now, recently, a group of Thinbloods have been giving the Camarilla a hard time. Now, Thinbloods are uh, these sort of kindred who were embraced, but didn't quite get the full you know, package deal as you guys sort of did. Their power is lesser than, some of them don't even have teeth that are sharp enough to pierce flesh. Uh, they have to use daggers and like, some of them can't use magic fully. They have to do sort of rituals with different objects and, and they get power from that, or alchemy rather. Um, and many people have very strong feelings about Thin Bloods. Some people believe that they are actually like the sign of the end times and they should be wiped out to prevent that from happening. Other people have simply looked down upon them because they don't, they aren't at the same caliber uh, and so on and so forth. So they, there, it's a situation where this territory is dominated by thin bloods and everyone knows it but the camarilla will not acknowledge it and prince vargas is trying their best to get back this territory uh one like neighborhood at a time and tonight you guys are on the board to be able to be on this like uh, the, the borderlands essentially um of glendale to ensure that they don't get any more territory and to actually try to take back some of the territory that they've taken before so uh, all you have to do is serve this one night in Glendale. And uh, after that, your rent will be paid for this month. You can go back to whatever you do uh, every night um, at your own discretion and everything. So in this quiet October night, you find yourselves entering Drawn's to Comic, uh, uh, Drawn to Comics, a comic book store located in downtown Glendale. People are coming and going on this like very early, probably 9 p.m. or so. Uh, like October night, as you see that there are a lot of people that are just fawning over the latest release of different manga and different comic books and everything. As you enter in and are greeted with fluorescent light and the staff that kind of like welcomes you and everything. And you uh, sort of walk around here and it's uh, it's fairly, you know, populated uh, in here. It's probably like 60% at capacity. 
and everything. Um, and up to this point, you haven't seen any Thin Bloods uh, for for now. Um, what is it that you guys would like to do? Because this was your meeting point where you were all together and meet with essentially your uh, like leader for this evening, which is Adrian De La Vega. Um, and yeah, and as you walk in, you do see one another. Um, what would you like to do? I am going to look for Sailor Moon stuff. You immediately find it. Awesome. I'll take it and start reading it. This is the, by the way, I really like anime. Not really, but I really like Sailor Moon. You hear, uh, you, and it, Adrian, you, you may have met these kindred before. You may not have, you know, you, you're in the same territory. So you may have bumped into one another at a certain mm -hmm. time. So you, you probably would have everyone's name on a sort of list that you're uh, supposed to work with tonight. And you know, it's, it's Gabriel, it's uh, Valerie, it's Robbie and Luna. Um, are the ones who are going to be like helping to serve you this evening, uh, along with with pictures and all that sort of stuff. And uh, you know that Robbie is like, the newest of the crew to be embraced, so they're still learning the ropes and uh, and everything. So um, yeah. Um. <clears throat> so let's see. So this I I don't like. This is just like a central meeting point. Like we all agreed we'd meet here. Correct. Yep. So okay. there are apparently thin bloods in this area. Yeah. You haven't really encountered any of them, but it's harder to tell because they're they some of them have, you know, more life in them than you guys do because uh, you Got guys it. are cold and dead. Yeah. So you would hear the sound of like uh, a phone uh, ticking, like like whenever you hit the the keypad like a bunch of times, like like a text message, like behind you, and uh, just with one hand moving at like an excessive speed uh, by typing with like one thumb. Um, and, uh, I go, all right. And sent. There we go. Look at you mixing in with the nerds. Hi. Hi. Hello. How's it going? Good. Robbie, right? Yep. Okay. Welcome. Did you come with everybody else or? They all arriving. Oh, it's separately. just me right now. I don't know if anybody's here. Is there? Hello? Yeah. Um. I don't. I don't. I don't I've got a it. room that we uh, that I uh, I bought out, sit in the back that uh, we can all meet up in after you get done with your Sailor Moon. All yeah. right. You have fun with that. And there are light up scepters right next. Uh, I grab one immediately <laughs> and start playing with. Perfect. Right. Excellent. You have fun with your lightsaber. It's not I'll a lightsaber. Walk away. <laughs> and at this time, the door does chime as Valerie and Luna do enter in uh, at here. So actually, what we'll do really quick is have you guys give a physical description of your characters. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to start back up to the top with Robbie. What does Robbie look like? Uh, Robbie is wearing a Hawaiian style um, Halloween shirt. Uh, also hard, wearing hard to picture. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, hard, hard to I picture, don't know. Right? I don't know. I don't know. Um, also wearing shorts that have like pineapples stamped on it, um, and uh, r really, really yellow um, running shoes. And that's basically it. Heck and then yeah. Adrian, Adrian, what is the, uh, what does your character look like? Uh, Adrian looks like um, very business oriented. He has a very form fitting, uh, slender, um, like a slim fit suit. Uh, he has a very skinny tie, black tie that he wears, uh, and he looks to be attached to his phone for the time being as he puts it away. Um, but he's very, uh, very well groomed. Uh, he's very handsome. Um, and uh, yeah, he's got, he kind of just looks just like me, but uh, much taller. He is like six foot one. Perfect. And then, uh, as I had said before, now Luna and Valerie both enter in as the door chimes and the staff greet you and same with the fluorescent lights. Um, what do your characters look like? Uh, starting with Luna.
Uh, oh, Maria. Maria is muted for the audience. Yeah. Oh, hello. I'm so sorry, everyone. Let me begin again. <laughs> How much did you guys miss? Was it muted so, the whole time? The whole. The, here's oh, the thing. You been. could read. You been. could read what I said. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's everyone. true. Thank goodness for that, at least. Thank goodness for that. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> Professional. Thank shooter. you for telling Hashtag us. Thank you for telling us. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, Luna is uh, exceptionally thin, um, with kind of a, a stoop, uh, a little bit of a hunch with their shoulders. Um, uh, dark hair with uh, bleach ends that kind of goes probably like down uh, towards like the mid chest. Uh, very um, closely shaved on one side. You can see that there's kind of some kind of patterns that are in there as well. Um, maybe runes, maybe some other something. Um, they are very, very pale, uh, exceptionally pale. Um, and they are dressed in um, aesthetically vintage clothing <laughs> that looks either like it was thrifted uh, or was handed down or they found it or something. It looks nice, but it also doesn't look new. Um, and Jinko are, jeans. Well, well maybe <laughs> not Jinko <laughs> jeans. But, <laughs> um, vintage. Classic vintage. Classic vintage. Jinko you know? jeans. Uh, they're also carrying a uh, two books, a notebook um, and like a really large, thick, like a large, thick book that you wouldn't really want to carry around with you. Typically, they have that in their arms as they open the door for Valerie. And Valerie, what does your character look like? Uh, she's about five, nine with like nut brown skin, dark, deep eyes and like purple hair and you see her dressed up in this lacy black dress with like pattern leggings that are a bit torn the question is whether or not it was on purpose or on accident <laughs> with really spiky shoes um she's definitely going for like a lacy goth look and in one hand she's just like loudly slurping like it's so obnoxious and on the other hand she's like on her phone and would have like by now we're her... assuming you've seen oh, red threads uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> this interruption brought to you by tiltify sorry Go donate everyone. <laughs> scared the it's crap funny. out of you God. Scared me. i was like what? yeah. what's happening Jesus. what is who is under attack <laughs> under, i'm here. under attack exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, and she would have like purposely kind of like wanted Luna to open the door for her, <laughs> just like lightly on her phone. Perfect. Um, side note, we hit our goal. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh my god. Hell yeah. Big donos. Yeti. Right out of the back. Hell yeah. Okay. I've been freaking out internally. <laughs> Thank yes. you, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I think that was, I think that's TPK to mode, right? No, 100 <laughs> is help the homies, thank you. It's help the homies. There's a 60 and 100, okay? There's a 60 and 100, no one hit, 75. No one hit that other one. one. No, we're not saying the number. We're not saying the number. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, all right, cool. And then uh, you guys walk upstairs to find this private meeting room that you have paid for in advance. So that way you could go over what you were going to uh, do tonight um, and go over your mission and all that sort of stuff. Uh, as you walk up the stairs, uh, you you see uh, Gabriel that's there. It's already in this section looking at the latest um, Power Ranger comics. And uh, of course, what does Gabriel look like? Um, as you approach Ford, you see these nice, um, black shoes. Um, they look designer. You see some nice black pleated pants, um, uh, with, with a little hem at, you know, the bottom of it, uh, with a nice black leather belt on, um, no shirt, just like a scarf, just like hanging over his neck. Um, excuse me. You see uh, slick black hair, 
just pulled all the way to the back. And Gabriel almost looks like a cross between as if Enrique Iglesias and Romeo Reigns had a baby. <laughs> so like that. And he's about um, he's about five, five, eight. He he's he's short, but he's just tough looking. And he's just there with his Power Rangers, you know. Just reading what Rita Repulsa is up to and, you know, wondering <laughs> when Tommy's really going to retire. It's like, Tommy, you've been doing this for 30 years, bro. Like, time's time's coming, man. Time's coming. Cashing that 401k from Zordon. Oh, God. <clears throat> yes. So, at this time, you all make your way up to the second floor of this establishment. As you do see, uh, you're the final member of your essential coterie for this evening. Uh, in this time, you finally get to, to look to one another. Um, is there anything that you guys would like to say or do? Welcome. I see uh, we didn't really set a dress code, did we? Is that a problem? Looks like everybody kind of came in what they were wearing. Yep. Didn't see anything on the uh, invite. Have to talk to my assistant. Um, so, uh, welcome everybody uh i see i don't know if you caught the memo of what we're doing here everybody know exactly what's going down no not exactly can you go over a little bit please more details would be nice i like your shoes by the way i tell valerie that thank you um gabrielle assumes you're talking to him and says you're Thanks. Appreciate it. Oh, Thank you. oh your oh, shoes are yeah. too are cool too. <laughs> no, that's your, your shoes are nice, Valerie. So many nice shoes. G Gabriel, oh, you take six nice. points of anxiety stress from <laughs> <laughs> no. wrong system, wrong system. <laughs> uh, in this time, do you are you having this meeting outside of the meeting room or did you all walk into it? Uh, in this meeting room, it's a essentially like a soundproof D&D &D room that people can rent out to play their tabletop RPG sessions and everything. So it's perfect for your meeting because you are, you know, you can't be heard. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, definitely would have uh, been inside the room, like, and uh, had them come to open the door and like enter the room. So I would, I would assume I wouldn't start talking until, you know, they're in the room and the door that is makes closed. Sense. Perfect. There is a lingering smell of Doritos, but other than that, it's like it'll serve its purpose. There are also glass windows here, so you can see out to the actual store as people are just simply shopping and doing their sort of thing. And uh, continue forward. Yeah. Yeah. Adrian like takes a finger and like uh, like runs it across the table and just kind of goes like this. And you can see the grease like between his fingers. <laughs> it smells um, like Mountain Dew here. <laughs> Um, he'll uh, look at the group and he will just explain, uh, kind of just go over what you went over, the whole reason being here, just the, the thin bloods in the area, and we've been assigned to check it out? Right, so you know that this is not a, like, combat operation, that's why you guys don't have body armor and, like, right. uh, weapons assigned to you and anything like that. You're simply just here to scout it out. If you see some thin bloods that are in the area, um, to either ward them off or go ahead and call in for reinforcements um, to be able to get you guys some help. Um, now, you know, and we'll say that your, your character is explaining this to them as they all have the, like folders, documents, usually paper to be able to uh, give to them, that these thin bloods uh, can be identified by like various tattoos, you know, on their bodies that they have like untouchables in old English that they kind of uh, <laughs> tattoo. That's like their their name essentially for their organization. This whole like uh, united front of all the thin bloods in the Arizona territory are essentially um, starting to gather together, but they're not really sure where exactly they're have their base of operations. But apparently, there's like some of them may be in Glendale, but no one really like is a super aware. So uh, that is the information that you know. Now, um, yeah. And then I, 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 you just see Robbie raise his hand. Yes, Robbie. Uh, yeah, um, I'm kind of new at this. Um, what, what's a what is a thin blood? I 
believe I just went over that entirety. Were you not listening while I was... Anyways. Robbie, you know what you are, right? Yeah. It's not that. It's more worthless than that. Oh. Just think, you know, like you, but not as good. Oh. Okay. That's weird. All right. All right. Um, are we going to go now or are we just right. here? So speaking of, uh, did you guys uh, have any run-ins or anything like that on your way in? Did you happen to spot, smell, see anything uh, out of the ordinary? Uh, no, I didn't. You guys did not. As you came here by bus, bike, or car, uh, you did not like see it. You just saw normal people kind of like doing their thing and everything. Um, I think Robbie ran here. I don't know. <laughs> no, I was running. Scooter? <laughs> yeah. Did you jog or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> on scooter? Can we say Roller Gabrielle lady? came on like a, on a bike? There you go. Not not like like a bicycle, not like a motorbike, but like on a bicycle. An electric nice. bike. Respect yeah, in his. E-bike. I'm like, oof. <laughs> Respect. Uh, I, I, know, I know nobody saw it, but Adrian definitely would have been dropped off by uh, his, his uh, handler. I, I guess we ha- I have a driver. So, um, it is at this time that you guys are finishing up this meeting, you're understanding it, maybe some questions are lingering in the back of your mind that you're waiting to answer, or ask, rather. Uh, but, Adrian, and we'll say uh, Gabriel and Valerie, um, you all see outside of the window, there is a group of, like, young adults that come through, one of which uh, is, like, has his hands, like, sort of up and combing his hair, like, slicking it back and everything, just chatting and cracking jokes with his uh, peers, as you can see, like, untouchables that's written in Old English on their actual forearm uh, that's there. And uh, you guys can see it in plain sight. It looks pretty fresh, too, the the ink and all that. Um, Yeah. Well, how serendipitous. How subtle, she says sarcastically. Pretty gaudy. (laughs) The entire entire forearm. Oh, is that them? Okay. That's yeah. Sorry. Uh, As you press them. your face against the window. Yeah, I'm doing that. <laughs> oh, is that them? I, I kind of just like grab you by the collar and just kind of slowly pull you back. <laughs> like, yes, that is them. Um. Well, I guess it's uh yeah it's 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 up to you guys how uh how do we want to approach this? We were told that you know we're not here to eradicate them per se, but maybe persuade them in a way to get out of here. To like go To away. move on. Maybe to a more suitable territory that isn't ours. Okay. Well, I, I would just tell them, but if you have yeah. something better than that. Let's go ruffle some feathers a bit. I'm just sitting like by the like on a chair, just like with with like my my ankles crossed, just kind of like slouched down, and like the book and the notebook are just sitting on the table in front of me, just like <laughs> leaning back. <laughs> Luna. <laughs> right. I'm glad we got the A the A team here. Uh, does anyone have premonition? No. I'd do it. No, 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 no. We so, answered poorly, everyone. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have rapid reflexes. Yep. The auto save is happening right now. Um so uh, <laughs> no, not the auto save. <laughs> so um in this time, uh you see some more people kind of filter in and everything like that, and they're just like you know, slapping hands together and they're getting really excited and they're just like chatting it up and they seem, now you're in a soundproof room so you cannot hear what they're saying. Right. I think you can crack the door open and you, it'll like you let the audio come through if you'd like to. Can any of us read lips or is that a thing or attempt I to? I would allow you to do uh, probably like wits, awareness, um, actually like wits and awareness would probably be good, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, roll. Uh, first, as a refresher, first, roll. Yeah, yeah as a it. refresher for everyone, uh, you're the black dots on your character sheet are going to represent a d10. So you're going to uh, take all the d10s or the black dots that you have, 
transfer them into d10s and put in your dice pool and then roll it. When you roll it, you're going to have uh, like various um, results, but six and above is a success um, for Vampire the Masquerade 5e. And uh, you have four successes? Okay, good. And um, one of the dice in your dice pool has to be your hunger die. Um, and that has an effect on what you know you go through essentially, uh, which we'll get to that if you guys get uh, one of those results. So you have four successes with this. As you kind of look through, you had two successes, is that right? Or three? Okay, so yeah. with two successes, uh, the, the difficulty was two for this. So you kind of look through the window and you're reading lips as they're all very familiar with one another. And as they're kind of like embracing one another and chatting it up and everything like that, they're starting to show off their tattoos. And you're starting to see that three uh, Thin Bloods now just became seven Thin Bloods, now just became 11 Thin Bloods. And you're starting to wonder if this whole place is like all Thin Bloods essentially. Um, that is kind of like around here as you're like, what is going on? And um, you begin to read partially of some of the lips uh, as they speak about like, you know, uh, dude, Lucas thought of a new ritual and it's gonna be amazing. You gotta, and then like it kind of like they turn their head away and they can't really hear it. And he's like, it's gonna identify, and then it just kind of like turns their head away and they can't really see it. But they're excited and they're gonna try something um, as they're all going to the back of the store. So you guys are on the second floor, uh, and there's like you know, just uh, and they're essentially going underneath you guys um, to go and check you know whatever they're doing out. Yeah, and you guys. Um, did not know that that they were this organized or had this many people like in their like ranks essentially uh so it's very surprising you're essentially surrounded by the quote-unquote enemy um you can't see any weapons on them at all and you know that they're like partial mortal sort of thing so maybe you could take them in a fight uh but it's uh, a little unsettling that there's so many here yeah so i'm like trying to read the lips and i'm like i think one of them is rich and they want to go under the, I don't know, Gabriel, did you, can you get it? I think I got just as much as you did. Are They're you excited though. They have something planned. I think plan. it probably plan. just- Plan, plan, of course, not plant. Any, anyway, sorry. I think it was probably might just be best if we stick to the shadows, follow them to this supposed the event they have going on and i mean follow them robbie to the event isn't the event gonna happen and don't we not want it to happen well if we take them out here who knows if they might call it off we don't have to take out all of them we only need one we need one mm. like infiltration stuff what are they wearing um, you see that they, they, they mainly look like uh, young adults and they just look like they're, you know, 20 somethings and they have normal street clothes sort of on uh, and all that. I don't know what the kids are wearing Supreme. <laughs> I was gonna say, you like, I, don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say, Robbie, you kind of you might be able to fit in a little bit with what they're wearing. I mean, I unfortunately am extremely well Hawaiian dressed. Hawaiian shirts with uh, themes on it. Pokemon <laughs> That's and, like, the... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting, uh, yeah, interesting. myself, on the other hand, um, am extremely well dressed, so uh, I might stick out like a sore thumb. I might need to um, down dress, if you will, in uh, order to infiltrate a little bit better, unless I'm a chaperone or some sort. I mean, it's up to you buy... guys. Mm -hmm. Just take off the jacket. I mean, I, st I, st I still feel a little out of place. There are anime posters, so it is beautiful. <laughs> so your Toreador uh, Bane does not activate. So I was going to say that um, there's anime shirts here if you want an anime shirt. I mean, we can give uh, you what a, is an a go to one. Uh, animation style. From... Why didn't you just say animation? Because that's what it's called. It's called an anime animation. No, it's just called anime. Interesting. Uh, which one of these anime? is a good choice. I can give you this blue Goku shirt. Goku, okay. Is that a good guy, bad guy? Oh, that's a really good guy. The best guy. Interesting. I would argue Vegeta. Hey, <laughs> that's no, we're not gonna start Piccolo's that a better dad, dad so. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Anime Wars. <laughs> like, excuse Forget me? Forget Vampire or... and all their political nonsense. Exactly. Yeah, anime. Yeah, we're oh, anime. Anyway, so we're anime? today, everyone. Yeah. I think there's a I, copy of... Yeah, there you go. I will put a graphic tee of Goku on. Sure, sounds good. You do so. Um, and, then, and then I will go out to the counter uh, to the shop wearing sure. the shirt. <laughs> you end up making your way down, and as you do so... Uh, you see that some of the staff have like locked the doors essentially and then they're just like this is gonna be so cool you guys got to check it out and everything as they look to you uh, guys and they kind of seem stunned for just a moment as they kind of look look and sort of like they whisper to one another and i'll use your read lips you know for this one your result for that one as you he see them go like don't even worry about it it, it, it doesn't even affect them so it's, it's cool as uh they're like all right sounds good he's like hey man can i help you uh do you, you uh you want to buy that shirt as um like, you look good in it as you see a tag hanging out from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't have to tell me. I already know. But um, yes, I will take one of your graphic T-shirts, please. Like, you got it. And then you go ahead and support a local business, a small business. And uh, <laughs> I appreciate your patronage. It's like, you know, feel free to hang out, check everything out. You know, like, got new stuff over there and everything. Meanwhile, out of the corner of your eye, you see there's a, there's a gathering of people that's kind of like in this, like, kind of corner in this back sort of room uh as you hear just like the uh you know like um distant sounds of them going like all right everyone gather around i'm gonna show you this it's gonna be really really cool it's a game changer for our for us it's gonna be the thing that that helps us like root out you know these sort of like uh like kindred and everything um so Luna's what is the rest going, of you doing Luna's yeah i was gonna say exactly that direction there's secrets yeah. okay. being shared i want to hear all of them please if you are on the balcony, like uh, like upstairs, essentially, you can still hear them, but you can't see them. Um, and uh, so what would you guys all like to do? Would you guys like to stay in the balcony on the second floor or go downstairs to actually see what's going on? I wanna go down um, there and like find a, sure. find, a, find a spot to post up. Yeah, me too. Anything to get away from at Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> you do find a, a broom that you just start sweeping, sort of like. <laughs> 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 and I'm so. just gonna whisper to Luna. I'm, I don't know. He's pretty hot, but he's kind of rude. I just look back to everyone. Which one? Um, the the soup ring one. Oh, no longer Goku. the Goku the Goku shirt one. <laughs> You see that, like, when you look over, you see Adrian is flipping through, like, a, a manga of, of Dragon Ball Z to, get, to like, try and <laughs> maybe character. get some talking points. To get oh, character. Oh, <laughs> character or some talking points, you know? Did anybody? I'm like, okay, go, okay, Kamaha Mama. Mama. Kamaha Mama. Kamaha Mama. It's Kamaha. Kamaha. How do you even <laughs> say that? <laughs> Kamaha, maybe. Yeah. Kamaha. Kiyo Ken. Yeah, Kiyo Ken. There you go. Uh, like, Luna just sighs a little bit louder and just looks away from this mess yep you're like chi chi that's graphic oh my god oh. <laughs> wait that's so, a no no word <laughs> yeah. so um yes it is at this oh and gabriel where are you um do you want to stay on the second floor or go downstairs gabriel is going to um slowly descend from the stairs exit the building and go closest to where the thin bloods are gathering out outside of the building to see uh, if he could kind of the front door uh, is locked currently and they're like oh that's yeah i mean you can um, still do that but uh no yeah. i'll go i'll go and i'll i'll look for um oh my god i had the graphic novel beforehand and i forgot the name of attack, it attack and titan or uh no in the one with brian k vaughn and fiona staple saga i'm gonna look for saga, saga and just kind of leave through that and uh just just read through it is the first volume mm -hmm. the one with um only ten dollars uh, yeah yeah uh, it's the first big graphic volume one perfect <laughs> so you're just kind of like going through that and sifting and like over your eye over it you like look at them so what's happening at this point is that they're all gathering around this one particular person uh they seem to be the the shortest of them as they're only about like maybe five uh five foot and he goes like gather around everyone i got something really cool i've been experimenting and i think this is going to be a game changer for us as he pulls out like a game boy advance and then he gets like an arizona iced tea and then he like blows into the cartridge and goes like check this out as he like pours his blood and arizona iced tea into it 
and then uh, you see a wave of energy waft over the entire area. I need all of you to make a, uh, it's going to be a resolve and composure check. Um, um, and there, it's going to be two in the attributes section. Yeah. Resolve and... Got it. Composure. Composure. Yeah. composure. Do we roll two attributes, or is it have always an attribute and a skill? Uh, oh, it's usually no. an attribute and a skill, but okay. this is going to be uh, two this attributes. Two friends. Okay. Plus Essentially, some... your willpower. Yeah. And okay. we roll a, a blood die, right? Uh, correct. Yep. In the pool must be a blood die, a hunger die. So we got five successes. Every, every one of them is success and even a, a bonus success. Yeah. Jeez. That was a wild roll. Three successes. Three? Okay. Remind me what counts as a success. Uh, six and above. Six and above. Excellent. What did ones count as? Uh, failures. Great. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Five successes. Two. Five? Okay. You got two? Okay. Or three. Sorry, three. Do failures three? counteract? Nope. Okay, uh, it's just, uh, the amount of successes, yeah. Uh, what is on your blood die? Me? Yeah. Eight. Eight? Okay, that's fine. And then, uh, Valerie? Wait, you know, so what am I rolling? Oh. <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna look on your character sheet, and there's gonna mm -hmm. be your uh, composure, and then your uh, resolve. There are two attributes that are at the yeah. very top. So the amount of black dice that's there, you're gonna go ahead and put that amount of d10s in your dice pool, and then roll it. Oh, okay. And then uh, when you look at them, it'll, six and above is gonna be a success. Uh, and let me know how many successes you have. I and one know. of those is actually gonna be your hunger die. Um, so just keep that result in mind. Yeah. I'm gonna take a bite of this lasagna. Excellent. I'm gonna actually <laughs> use. I have a. I have a, a up to three die reroll. I'm gonna reroll my other two dice and see if they move me better. Sure. Yes. So that brings my total to five successes. Dang! Okay, sure. oh, we got a lot of good successes there. I think I have four successes. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I Perfect. lied. So, I lied. Oh. I had three. Re I had three dice to re-roll. <laughs> I have six successes. There we are. We got it. We got it, everyone. Hell yeah! And you only nice. re-rolled the ones you you failed only at, right? Because you I can't re-roll the six. Okay, great. Yeah. Perfect. So anyone who had uh, um, lower than five successes, uh, what happens is uh, I think it's called sigmata or something like that uh, occurs, where you begin to bleed from your eyes and your ears and your nose and your mouth un unexpectedly as you start to like, just like, oh my God, as you start to like uncontrollably sort of do this, even your fangs begin to bear as it's just causing like this, this uncomfortable sensation. For those of you who did succeed, um, you feel this try to like overcome your body and you're, you're holding it back with all of your might and all of your prowess. And it's able to maintain oh, as the person in the center of this, this gathering uh, is like, uh, you know, like, so, this is pretty cool because it only works on like kindred and everything. I don't know if it works on werewolves or whatever else I might see out there, but I've been specifically practicing this on, on kindred and it makes them bleed from their eyes and their nose and their mouth. And, and they look over to Robbie as, because uh, um, you failed your role, right? No, I got, uh, I got five. five successes. Oh, you got five? Never mind. They don't look at Robbie. I think Gabriel uh, is the only one that failed. I failed too, but are yeah, we yeah, in no. that room? Or are we uh, still like afar? <laughs> I think Gabriel, you said you were in the room looking at Saga, right? Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay, okay. Yeah. So okay. So they looked to, to Gabriel, and they look over, and they're like, "Hey, man, are you okay?" And they suddenly like, "Oh, wait a second. As they kind of like look, and they're like, "Hey, man, are you, are you one of?" As they don't want to say the word, but they are like starting to gather around a little bit. Um, there's it. probably about twelve people. Yeah. <laughs> I go. Um, yeah, Robbie's there, being like, "Yeah, man, what are you?" It was like, <laughs> <laughs> joining in on him. <laughs> um, I think Gabriel's going to kind of play it, downplay it, as mm -hmm. like he's just reading like a real like spicy part within <laughs> Saga. Um, <laughs> it turned into a real life anime. <laughs> yeah, and just gonna be like. <laughs> No, it's just and and he just shows like the spicy part within like, it's like it's just I was not expecting this to happen at all so, to them. Um, I mean so, this is kind of wild, like they're supposed to hate each other, but here they are and they're I mean, this is <laughs> comics nowadays, like 
So wow. this is unwinnable, I will say, because your fangs are bared, you're bleeding from your mouth and the eyes and the ears and the, all that kind of stuff. So you're like, this is crazy. As you just like turn the page nonchalant and like continue forward. So they're like, you're a kindred. Are you are you here to spy on us? As they like uh, kind of gather around and they're asking like, and some of them are getting a little sketched. Uh, Luna? Um, the person who had this strange, uh, whatever the hell they just did. Um, Alchemy, yeah. Where are they? Uh, they're in the, the very back of this sort of like congregation of, yeah. I'd people, like yeah. to uh, go over. Do it. Um, do it. I dare you. Do it. Oh, okay. Well, if you dare me, then. Do um, it. Here's what I want to try to do. Then. Um, I would like to, as I'm walking, because we have like claws, yeah, as vampires, we have like. Um, some of you do. So, for example, Gabriel is a uh, gangrel, so they literally can turn their fingernails into like thick claws and all that. Yeah. I would have, however, me being myself, a very small, very old, actually old, not look old a uh, thin knife that I would keep on me at all times. Um, and uh, as, as I kind of am like watching all of this pan out, I want to um, very slightly uh, cut open the side of my arm um, mm -hmm. and coat this blade in my blood with Scorpion's touch. Sure, okay. So you do so. So go ahead and give me a rouse check. So rouse check is going to be a 1d10. And six and above is like, you know, uh, you don't gain any more hunger. Five and below is you gain uh, one hunger. Okay. Oh, oh, we get hungrier. Oop. <laughs> Whoop. You rouse the blood as you pull upon it to, to bring this power out and may turn your actual blood into to poison, to a paralyzing sort of poison. Mm -hmm. And it coats your blade and you succeed in this endeavor. Um, so anyone else want to do anything in this time? So Valerie, uh, you're also bleeding profusely. No one sees you at this time, uh, but as oh. you wipe, you know, you're... <laughs> Actually, she wouldn't wipe. She would be like on her phone texting her friend, like, hey, I think it's gonna be a long night. Can we reschedule a shoot tomorrow? <laughs> like that sort of thing. And then like during that, she feels the moisture collecting, feeling fangy. She's just like, you know what? I already have my phone out. She's gonna start taking some selfies. <laughs> this not being helpful at all. <laughs> and you immediately see it. Yep. And then, so, um, Robbie, what do you do in this situation? Um, and also, getting, Adrian, afterwards, yeah. Sure. I'm getting close to the the guy that has the Game Boy, and I'm gonna be. Um, oh, is so, that the Game Boy? The crowd is pretty thick, so you're gonna have to either push your way through, um, or you know whatever you'd like to do, because the crowd is pretty dense here. Okay, I'm gonna try and, and getting true to that guy. Sure. So go ahead and do your, uh, we'll do your strength and your dexterity, or sorry, uh, athletics. Strength and dexterity? No, oh, strength and athletics, yeah. Athletics, okay. So. Well, we got the numbers. Okay. Um, the 10 is a double success, right? Uh, double 10s are a double success, yeah. So if you have two 10s in your dice pool, that's a critical mm -hmm. success. Okay, I got two of those. Okay, good. Um, what was the result of your hunger die? Uh, oh, shit. Uh, and it should be eight. one of eight? Okay, that's fine. How many successes did you get? So it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six okay. successes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, yes, yeah, so with six successes, um, you're able to push through as everyone's kind of like, they're focused on Gabriel, who is like trying their best to downplay all this blood that's like kind of like spilling from their face and everything as it's getting on the copy, uh, which now you have to buy it. Um, oh, and no. like, <laughs> oh, no. so, um, you're, you're just slipping through the crowd and Lucas is like, oh shit, as he's like, like fishing for other stuff and like kind of just freaking out a little bit. And he looks to you and you don't have the blood in your face, so he doesn't think anything of you as he uh, just kind of is like scared for, for everything. As you hear the murmurs from all these thin bloods being like, oh my God, is this gonna get like violent? Is this gonna get like, you know, are we gonna have to throw down here? As like, they're all sort of like talking and murmuring with one another. 
And then, uh, but you're inching closer and closer to him. And then Adrian? So, I don't know too much about uh, Vampire, but I do have a skill or a, a, pre a presence uh, called Awe, mm -hmm. which um, gathers people towards me. Uh, or, of course, makes them scared. But I'd rather gather them towards me and away from Gabriel. So what I'd like to do is activate my awe. Okay. So and... that is a passive, so you don't have to roll rouse. Sure. Um, you can you add your presence uh, to your social rules, um, essentially. So, yeah. So what I'd like to do is um, in a... I don't know how to say it. Like, uh, I'm going to try to be like... Oh my God! Look at this thing over here, and it's gonna be me like holding up like a copy of uh. I can't, can I reach behind the counter and grab something that's expensive, like a card that has like you know a, or or, or a magazine or something like that, or a comic book that has like way you know a lot of wrapping around it and has like a big price tag on it and everything like that. Sure, we'll say that everyone's focused, so you can slip behind the counter and grab an item of, of that you deem is important. Um, so you're gonna a charisma or manipulation and then a performance check um to try to like you know do this big sort of show that like you know to distract right them. i just i want to be like hey is anybody buying and i just kind of want to like raise it in the air um yeah. let's see so it's a a charisma per or manipulation charisma? then your manipulation. performance and then your uh presence okay and then performance and then The big dice pool. I like it. I love many dice. Many All right, and then I will. This is the blood dice. One, two, two, three, four, six. So I have four success. Quick. Uh, and blood die is a seven. So. So that's good. Okay. So you have three successes in this uh, situation, as it's enough to be able to. Uh, cause like two thirds of the group to momentarily get distracted uh, from Gabriel to you because they're freaked out. So any loud noises, they immediately like you know jerk towards and essentially yeah. Um, and they uh, you cause this momentary distraction. And I look and I'm like, is is Black Lotus any good? I don't. What is what is this? And I'm like waving it around like a floppy like I'm floppy <laughs> disking it. I, and then uh yeah so. They're kind of freaking out here as they're trying to assess the situation. As they're like, you know, they're, they're still trying to question, you know, Gabriel and you guys, like, what's going on here? Like, like as, uh, yeah. So anyone else, would you like to do anything? I wanted to head towards the same um, Game Boy wielding individual as uh, uh, Robbie was. Um, okay. And were you upstairs or downstairs? I was uh, downstairs. Initially? I was downstairs. Uh, Robbie downstairs? and I were okay. going to the, the group together. So I imagine that we, we might. It's possible we were kind of... I was, like, following behind the wake that Robbie was leaving behind. <laughs> sure. So you will have to make a dexterity and, and stealth roll okay. to hide the fact that you, like, have this knife and cut yourself and, like, you know, all that sort of stuff. Okay. To see if you're able to, yeah. Okay. I don't have a lot of dice for that. <laughs> Depending on what Luna does after this, um, Gabriel will react to it. Okay. This doesn't count as subterfuge, right? This isn't subterfuge. No, that'd be lying to someone, essentially, okay. yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, six and above, right? Correct. Three successes. Three successes? Okay. So with three successes, it's mostly gone unnoticed um, by multiple people. You do have the knife in your hand. It's coated with your blood. It has paralyzing touch onto it. And uh, and yeah, as you begin to like slink your way behind Robbie as you're approaching uh this this person who's like freaking out i want to whisper again, to robbie as we're like if i can um sure. as we're you, going you just hear this like how tall is robbie six two okay um okay luna's like luna might be six feet um if they didn't have like a little bit of a perpetual stoop um okay. but uh you kind of hear uh generally behind you um, do you think we should take this one with us? Yep. <laughs> Did you say something? As like, um, <laughs> she threw his backpack and like, nope. 
And then, uh, well, Valor, you could do uh, one thing before Gabriel will will go ahead and uh, take their action. Yeah. Uh, she would have been content of her selfies by now. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, because she's a makeup person, she would have already started to wipe off the blood with yeah. like a hanky or something, French cotton, who knows. You're like already reviewing <laughs> it. Like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, and uh, she would just walk down. <laughs> sure. Okay, good. And then Gabriel, yeah. it is uh, your action. So a good amount of these people are distracted. You see your allies going to this person who has this sort of like, you know, Game Boy Advance or whatever. And the 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 ritual is done. This alchemy, you know, effect is over because he seemingly got distracted and broke it uh, or broke it off essentially. Um, so you're no longer affected by this. So if you wipe your your eyes and your blood away, it'll it'll go away. But um, what would you like to do in this time? Um. He's kind of looking towards Luna and and Robbie and seeing them move into the crowd and um I don't know if he would pick up on what's going on what what they're going to do he just seems them moving in but <clears throat> he's just going to be like you know what um it's just not worth it. It seems like you, you all aren't, are in a saga. I mean, I don't know why. It's it's a good story. It's beautifully written. They're like, whoa, drawn. whoa, whoa! We are in the saga as uh, they reveal tattoos of saga. On the <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I mean, then you know the part I'm talking about, and he, just, he like flips, flips the book over. It's like, Clearly, I mean, how you're, I... you're a man I mean, of culture, but uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, you know, why can't we just bond over this? fantastic piece of literature. I mean, it's won Eisner Awards. Uh, uh, plentiful. I mean, they do, like, you see some of them uh, in a situation with your general passive sort of awareness uh, and wits and all that kind of stuff. You can see that there are people that are fishing for sort of weapons but ha aren't actually drawing anything or using anything. They're trying to see and assess this sort of situation because they only really see you. And then, uh, Valor, you said you took the moment to wipe away your blood and everything. Uh, yeah, so they, they don't ever see your, your stuff, but um, they do engage in conversation with you as they like hold up a hand and like stop everyone from actually like attacking or whatever. And they're like, listen, man, like uh, we, we know what you are. You're, you're a kindred, probably like a, a full blooded one, right? Like, do you, do you know what territory you're in? As they begin to puff their chest out and uh, begin to, yeah. Listen, I'm just passing through town. You know, my, my LCS is, is far from here, and, you know, my pool box is backed up for days. I just, I'm just trying to pick up some stuff for the road, not looking for some trouble, and, you know, clearly it's 15 of y'all versus one of me. I mean, we know who's going to win, right? Do we really need to do this and embarrass one of ourselves? Go ahead and do manipulation and uh, either charisma or manipulation and then persuasion. You are also stunning, uh, so go ahead and add. I think it's like two extra dice to your dice pool. Because that's okay. Stunning. Perfect. You say. Stunning. Yeah. Stunning. What? Dang. He's essentially like a JoJo's character. So when he reads his comic books, it's like click <laughs> back. <pardon. laughs> yeah. back. There's like a, there's a whole charisma. pose when you're reading. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. A spotlight persuasion. comes out of somewhere. He <laughs> was like, Ksh. there. Do that. One, two, three, four, and then my blood dice. Uh, four successes. Okay, with four successes, you say this to everyone, and they start to mull it over, being like, ah, man, like, we can't, like, just start fights with everyone, otherwise we'll be just like them, and they kind of, like, murmur about it, and then some, there are some people that are like, nah, man, we can't trust it at all, like, uh, but for the most part, you've, you've convinced them to kind of, like, smooth it over. Meanwhile, um, this dude, Lucas, is like fishing through his backpack and finding items, and he's like trying to do another alchemy sort of like ritual, uh, essentially. And he's like, oh my god, oh my god! Like, kind of like I'm stoop over on one side, like over <laughs> the shoulder, and like look down and just say, just like really quietly at first, and then I want to say, what are you doing? He looks to you and he goes, oh shit, as he like accidentally cuts himself, uh, on like his knife that he has for his actual rituals as it slips into this concoction of things that he like has with him. And before your eyes, before everyone's sort of eyes, 
um, you see this like warp or rift through like thin air begin to tear open as blood just begins to pool and surround and become like a giant essential portal uh, that begins to just uh, suck things through uh, one by one. So, oh my um, god. The, <laughs> not this. The, it's the a guy. Th- <laughs> the, what? Good. I don't know. That. So you we're joking, right for D&D? y'all. Yeah. D'Angelo was joking about this before it started. It turns out it wasn't a joke after all. <laughs> no, joke. no, 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 no jokes here. So, um, what happens this time is that uh, this alchemy ritual has gone horribly wrong. Whatever what he was trying to do has uh, unexpectedly caused this rift in time and space and began to suck all of you into it uh, very forcefully. Um, we're just gonna do an unwinnable sort of check because it'd be very awkward for like most one of you to get caught into this and then one person doesn't. It's like, <laughs> so do you read Saga? Like, let's go over that. Like, what do you check out in the store? Uh, so um, one by one, you all get pulled into this, this area as uh, you try to hold on to something, you hold on to each other, Territory disputes. My cell phone. Like, yeah, exactly. I thought you'd be more concerned Not about that. like your jacket and your, yeah. your shirt. Yeah. Going into yeah, another realm so. and all yep. you have you is see, a t-shirt. You see your <laughs> suit it's gonna be, jacket. New t-shirt. Yep. You see your suit jacket flown in there, and then all of a sudden your your Goku shirt gets flown in as well. As you, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you guys all get sucked in one by one with this like group of like thirteen thin bloods, <laughs> as well. As you're traveling through sort of time and space, you're seeing things you should never ever imagine uh, or ever see before. As like stars are exploding and like you know st- shooting stars and weird creatures from beyond the cosmos that are just sort of there. And uh, you, before you can even comprehend what you're actually looking at, you are thrown violently into this sort of uh, this this street seemingly. Now you look around and you see it's it's the same uh, buildings and the same structures as downtown Glendale as you had seen coming to this area. You're right in front of Drawn to Comics, but the only difference is that there's, uh, it's like ruinous, essentially. There's like, looks very old, looks very like, there's vegetation that's overtaken it. Some buildings are destroyed and you guys are here with these 13 other thin bloods that are freaking out being like, you know, like, what the fuck did you do, Lucas? And he's like, I yeah. don't know, they scared is me. Lucas still I there? Like, I was gonna say, yeah. yeah. Is yeah. he right you there? Are... I grab yeah. onto him. Like, like his shoulders and like giant eyes exceptionally excited looks more awake than they ever have in the entire time with like a grin their fangs are kind of like starting to come out they say yeah. you need to tell me how you did that I need to and, go back and the to your horror the portal closes one person one thin blood's like like oh my god I gotta get through and they like get stargated <laughs> as like half their body just like uh, amazing <laughs> Uh, oh shit! Gabriel <laughs> walks up and um, uses feral weapons to extend his uh, paws out and just brings it upon like the sh- his shoulder and says, "It's probably best if you answer Luna's question and quickly too." So at this time, uh, everyone's freaked out. They're all startled and they're like, "Whoa!" whoa as a the two people that actually brought like a firearm begin to like pull it out and everything and there's a stalemate like here and everyone's freaking out so um like adrian valerie robbie what do you guys do in the situation as well as you see your companions like you know so since adrian's cover is like not there any longer he's just gonna like take off his shirt and he's just gonna be shirtless (laughs) he's of course he's got like a 19 pack uh, and he's, you know, he's, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's ripped, <laughs> he's ripped, it. but he's not, he's like still thin, you know, and yeah. everything like that. Uh, um, but yeah, he's just going to have like suit pants on and suit shoes. Um, and he's just going to approach Barry kind of like, not angrily, like, you know, with like fangs out or anything like that, but definitely with like purpose. That's, that's I, basically. I take another scarf I had in my back pocket and throw it to Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> scarf. Not be like, scarf. thank you, as you like throw it over. Yeah, uh, and then uh, Valerie. Uh, Valerie's gonna look a little bit disgusted because she had to dodge that slice, dude. <laughs> oh, you like just cleaned everything up, and then there's like a splat of blood that's on you, and you're like, <sighs> but she like she would have seen Adrian do that and started smiling a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Robbie. Uh, Robbie is on the ground. He's dusting his, and he gets up and dusting himself. That was so cool. Can we do it again? 
and you're looking up and you're seeing that there uh, essentially is this like um, huge cloud of like uh, just a storm essentially that is just rolling through the Too they're soon. just uh, <laughs> yeah right Too soon. Yeah. <laughs> in Arizona right now we have a dust storm and like it's, it, it's like winds are high dust is blowing everywhere so like uh, yeah and um, things don't look right here as you take a moment to like well everyone else is engaged in this conflict you and Valerie are sort of looking around and beginning to notice that like, hey, we're not where we like were just a few moments ago, even though it looks all sort of the same. And you begin to hear this sort of sound and feel this sort of rumbling beneath your, your feet that no one else sort of notices. So if you want to go ahead and do a wits and awareness check um, to see what you can identify. And this is both for Valerie and Robbie. Yeah. Wits and awareness, okay. <laughs> You say that my phone goes off in the other room. Right yeah. <laughs> the wits and awareness. Okay. Correct. I just looked at our uh, amount we've raised so far. It's uh, very nice, mm -hmm. just to say the least. Two sixty-nine, oh. sixty-nine. It's double nice. It's real good. It's real nice. Is it? Is it seventy-five dollars? <laughs> is it? No, it's twenty nine dollars and sixty nine cents. Oh, nice <laughs> noise! It was um, really nice. I, I have four successes. Four? Four? Sorry. Oh, you're good. So both of you have four successes. So you guys like train your ears and like hone your eyes as like there is dust that's like um, hindering visibility just slightly in this sort of area. But sure enough, you see a silhouette of a very large creature. It has to be about like maybe nine feet tall and probably maybe about six feet wide. And as it gets just closer and closer and closer, you see it has multiple limbs and it has various like body parts of different creatures that are sort of in, in it and all that kind of stuff with about three heads as it kind of like uh, eagerly sort of like chomps at, at like its various mouths and like uh, lumbers over to you guys as everyone is sort of like gathered in this sort of conflict, not paying attention to what's about like 40 feet away and uh, barreling over. Um, is there anything you like to say or you just want to like back up and watch? <laughs> Robbie hey. takes a picture. Hey, turn around. And she's also gonna say that and like take a selfie with their reactions. <laughs> oh, yeah, everyone turns you, around. Yeah, you get like a... <laughs> <laughs> So if you'd like to, you can go ahead and do a uh, uh, intelligence and occultist role to identify what this creature is. Uh, yeah. Um. Who do you say to turn around to, by the way, Valerie? Just kind of to everyone, or? Yeah, like she would have tried to project her voice so everyone heard, okay. like, hey, turn around. And then. I would, <laughs> there I there are a couple of thin bloods who have like the firearms that are that look back and then just go like, you know, heart fingers. And like... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I turn around too. Um, One success. Can I One success, roll? okay. Go for it, yeah. Okay, okay. this is exactly you're like, I don't know what a creature is. It looks weird. What would this role be again? Uh, it would be intelligence and occultist. Occultist, that's why. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I have nothing in the occultist. I was about to say, like, I, I have got, like, one. nothing. Like, I don't read. Both of those five things seven? are okay, total fails. So with five uh, successes, you recognize that this is a, a fleshcraft creature. Um, so like it's made CJ by... a fleshcraft creature? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, so various body Why parts of either here? kindred and also uh, <laughs> humans and everything like that that are just merged together with like foul sort of necromancy and blood sorcery and all that kind of stuff. Or just flesh craft, actually. Um, I would, and, uh, you would watch You would watch as Luna drops this, this poor sad person who's in front of them and turns eh. towards this thing with that same kind of like fascinated look and just cocks their head and say, now why are you? Just kind of looking at this giant creature Are as you encroaching. flirting with this thing? Who's to say? <laughs> yeah, who's to say? And this is no her. judgment, Sean. Yeah, no judgment, no, so, of course not. No judgment, uh, shot. I think yeah. this is a good time to take our 10 minute break. On that note. So we can see if they can date or defeat this monster. And, uh, date or defeat? <laughs> Will this flesh cast creature get a rose from Luna? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Oh, as an aside, I got a three on my blood die. I don't know if that matters. 
Uh, no. So if you get a one on your hunger die, um, and then you fail your roll to to like succeed or whatever, that's a bestial failure. So you freak out. If you get if one of the the critical successes is a ten and it was one of your blood die, that's a messy critical, meaning that you break the masquerade in some way, but you succeed in whatever you're doing. So. <sighs> Good to know. Yeah. Okay, so 10 or 1 on that. Okay, great. We're learning. And friends. you have to roll. Yeah, and you have to roll two hunger dice in every dice pool because you have two hunger right now. Uh, yeah. So. Okay, well, the other one's a good thing. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> and then, all right, good. So cool. we'll go ahead and take our 10 minute break really quick and then uh, get snacks, use the bathroom, whatever yes. you need to do, and we'll be back soon. Do all of the stuff. We'll be right back, everyone. 